Hello, everyone. I'm Sam Ekman of Gold Derby here with Deidre O'Connell, nominated for her performance in Dana H. And I don't think I've ever seen a piece of theater quite like Dana H before. Uh, so I'm curious, how did Lucas sort of tell you about it? How did he describe it? And what was your reaction when you heard what it was meant to be? Um, I think that Lucas uh had sort of uh, had a flash of clarity about what it was supposed to be. He and his mother were talking a lot about is there is there is there something in there in in the the story um, that would be a play, and so simply to try to have a document where he could sort of hear her objectively, he asked his friend. Uh, Steve Carlson to to interview her so that he would just ask questions but, and, and know nothing about the story. So that was how the the document came to be. But as soon as Lucas heard it, he saw in his mind uh, what he wanted it to be. Yeah. So um, he began to work on editing it, and well, not really editing it, but but because it was it was several days of interview, so to make making it into something that was a manageable size, I guess is the word. Um, and but he had the idea that it would be someone lip syncing the whole thing, and you know, no one's the reason you've never seen that before is that nobody ever did that before. I mean, people, there are amazing lip syncers in this world uh, who have done. I, you know, uh, uh, several big pieces that are big, but they'll have a lot of music in them. They'll have a lot of things that have a certain kind of rhythm that you can follow. And so anyway, um, he came to me partly because uh, oddly enough, during the time when the story of Day and Age was actually happening, Lucas saw me in a play. So that's many, many years ago. This is like 20 years ago. He saw me in Irene Fornes's mud at the signature. And he was struck by how much I reminded him of his mom then. And he was a young, young man and he had just moved to New York to go to NYU and he wasn't even sure he was going to be a playwright at that point. And uh, we never met for years and years, but that had always stayed in his head. So then over the years we'd met, we'd, do, we'd done workshops of other plays of his together. We were, we were crazy about each other. Um, and he came to me with this piece, the idea of this piece. It wasn't really the idea of it because they already had two productions, the one in LA and the one in Chicago playing. And um, I really did not know what to think. I mean, I, I read the, the thing as a document, like as a play and knew that I wanted to do it. Mm -hmm. But the idea of lip syncing for that long, I had no idea what it would feel like. I had no idea if I could do it, if I would have a natural gift for it or whether it would be just one of those things that I, I could not do. You know, you don't know if you like somebody asks you to do something. Okay. And I, and I, uh, and there was no way to find out except just dive in and start trying to learn how to do it and try start trying to learn the material. So I had to commit way before I was sure that it wouldn't be a very claustrophobic, um, mm. you know, bad experience. I had to say, I'm in for, I think the commitment was already going to be a year or so because we had two runs set and but it was before it had a New York run at all and the idea that it was going to become what it did not as a piece I think I think we always knew what the piece needed to be whether I could do it or not was a question and but the idea of ever going to Broadway or anything, it was <laughs> absurd that that was not part of the plan at all this was a piece everyone was making because they loved the idea of seeing if they could do it. We loved the idea of seeing what it would, what it would be to make it, what the work of, of making it would do to us. We wanted to see whether it worked at all in front of an audience. The first time we had an audience in Los Angeles, we, I don't think we would have been surprised if everyone had just gotten up and left. It, it just was not clear to us how this, it, maybe it was clear to Lucas because he's strangely a genius but but I think I was ready for it to go any number of ways and I was still in for the ride mm. I wanted to go on the ride but it was like that it was like this is it I'm using myself as a as a science experiment I really felt like that I felt like all right well I've been you know acting all this time and learning how to do all these things 
I will be a petri dish for this experiment. <laughs> well, I would love to I dive. <laughs> yeah, I would love to dive into the process behind lip syncing because when I would describe this to friends, saying you have to go see this play, once you say lip sync, they're like, "What? Like RuPaul's Drag Race lip sync for your life?" And that's not what it is. There's specific mouth shapes you're making to match her voice. There's you're moving your hands even to match the sounds of the bracelets clanging on the recording yeah so yeah. It, it's <laughs> hyper specific so can you walk I, us through the process of how you got it that specific i mean uh a lot of it was just time just putting mm -hmm. an enormous i did a lot of uh, i did a lot a lot of homework i was i was alone with the material and could hear it for about two and a half months and i would go back and forth between trying to memorize it as almost like a piece of music in my mind and then try to memorize it as a piece of text and the terrible thing was that i could spend all day one day learning the music of it all right that was a a, a well-spent day i can I can sort of find my way through the whole thing. Then I would be like, okay, well now we're gonna go back to old fashioned way and go through the text. I'd learn a page or a page, two pages. And when I put them together on the third day, they would cancel each other out. It was like a neurological phenomenon <laughs> that was so depressing. I was so scared because it just kept, it, that just kept happening. It was, it was a funny thing. It was like learning one way and learning the other way did not, and then gradually, I feel like just by over and over again, they, they gradually started to meet. But I did feel like it was a brain, like a brain thing that was changing. It was, mm. I mean, it must be people who learn how to be concert pianists or learn how to, there's, there's tasks that, you know, you can present yourself that'll do that kind of like, all right, you're rewiring your brain right now. I was a little um, old for that sort of thing. <laughs> I think it'd be easier if you're like five. <laughs> well, you have you pulled it off, uh, so something worked in there. Um, I, I mean, and then and then finally to have it, and then to so, sort of have to surrender to it every day. There was a way that I I couldn't get behind it or ahead of it, so it became like this exercise in not uh, either feeling triumphant about a moment that you had just gotten really well or feeling really angry at yourself for a moment that you had blown. There was no space for that. If I, if I thought any of those evil thoughts that you think all the time as an actor, I, the next second would be off because it was just such a, it was, there was such a huge tell. Um, and you, when you're performing this, you are wearing earbuds uh, so you can hear the recording. Yes. What is that experience like to be in front of an audience, but I would imagine sort of your aural world is very closed off. Yeah, I could hear if they if if the audience had a had a large response to me, I could hear it, but I couldn't hear like sometimes when cell phones went off and stuff, mm -hmm. if they it, sometimes I could hear them, but usually I couldn't hear them. And that was great. So people <laughs> would be like three cell phones went off. <laughs> didn't know it. Didn't know about it. The other thing was that there was nothing I could do about getting a laugh. There, there was no pause I could make. There was no way I could play it in terms of the timing. So the idea that I couldn't uh, hear it or respond to it, I could hear laughs, but I, but it, there was there was just nothing, no adjustment I could make. And it was a funny thing, like the contract that happens with you in the audience when they understand that that's the case and they understand it very fast. I don't know if you felt that way, but, mm -hmm. but all of a sudden you're like, oh, I see what she's doing. I see that she's not gonna be able to pause for us. And, and you kind of hang on and we're all in the same room together and we're all sort of in this deal that we're all gonna, I don't know, like hold our breath like together and get through this whole hour and 15 minutes. So it felt, I felt very close to the audience, even though I couldn't hear them or play them. But I felt like there was a deal that got made very quickly. And I didn't know that that would happen. And it was a amazing experience because I did know that they were quieter than I'd ever been able to get them to be before. <laughs> you know, I guess that, if that's the goal, no coughing. <laughs> there was no coughing. You know? But it yeah. was like, uh, oh, everyone's just like, and it, that, 
feeling was fantastic. So I could feel, I could feel when the, when the tension was right and we were worried, I'm just going on and on, but anyway, that's what you want, right? Um, we were worried that, that moving to Broadway, just being in a house a little larger than what we were used to, or just the context, just the, just the, the lifting up somehow of it would would change that and make it more like people could sit back in their seats or they could feel you know bored and walk out or that we, we didn't really know if we would be we're going to be able to get the same kind of concentration and it was even more it was it it, it made me really realize that number one we underestimate the audience you know tourists that, that I would run into on the street who had, had never seen a play before would would have gotten it completely there was no and that happened a bunch of times where a couple of people went, man are you Dana age and I, I couldn't believe that the, you know we're Times Square and they're <laughs> they're responding so strongly to that thing that I would have expected them to be kind of like no that seems crazy yeah to spend that much money to sit in a seat and watch you do that <laughs> <laughs> I mean but then it be, it was this thing that was absolutely clear to the audience and the and the uh, the rooms are beautiful, like the the Lyceum. The the rooms are built for that, and you sort of forget that sometimes. That no, they're perfectly they're they're you know the the good ones are just perfectly made. So they do focus a, a little small woman in the middle of the stage. They do mm. they do make it so that you're just looking at exactly the right thing. And when you're because you're talking about you know you don't have a time to pause it's very hyper specific to this recording did you find room then to sort of be able to play with it and and space to like keep it fresh for yourself every night it it it's it's very strange two things about that and and uh, Steve Chappell who is kind of my coach because he's a person who's done a lot of lip syncing he works with lip synca and he has a piece that he's made where he lip syncs uh Lenny Bruce routines and he, so he knows a lot about lip syncing. He's got a the expert. So he would say to me, you are going to be really surprised how the recording and the, the, the feeling of that, that day is very different from day to day. And I was like, that's not possible. It's just not possible. The, the differences, it, I mean, it just shows to Goya how your mind works. The differences were profound. Some days she seemed slightly angry and defended and and careful with the, with her words some days she seemed open spirited and and uh, and light some days she seemed heartbroken i mean and i would not know what it was going to be it wasn't like i woke up feeling sad and then the character was it was i i would have to be sitting in that chair before i knew what what that vibe was going to be and it was often very different night to night the other thing was that inside that really tight constraint maybe because i mean and more and more the longer i did it maybe because the constraint was so tight i found my my uh my sense of doing it was very loose was very soft i felt like i was finding it a, 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 a new time every time i uh, that was very enjoyable, that feeling of, and, and there was a, I mean, I wasn't constrained to, you know, there was one sip of water. There were a lot of, there were a lot of things. There was one sip of water. There was, you know, one way that I would hold certain things, but there was also a lot of freedom inside it. There, it wasn't like I had to like do that at a certain point. And um, mm. those, those little things of just being alive and, and uh, how we, how we behave that, that, that shifted around a little bit every time. But I don't know that it shifted around an enormous amount. I can't really tell. It felt inside like I had a lot of freedom. Yeah. But I think if you saw it twice, you'd be like, she did the exact same thing. <laughs> and I'd be like, that was the sad version. That was the happy version. What are you talking about? You'd be like, no, Dee Dee, it's imperceivable to the human eye that there's any difference. Uh, well, this one, you, you, know, you were talking about bringing it to a bigger space on Broadway. Um, and you've been on Broadway a couple times before, but I, I would say the bulk of your career exists off Broadway. Um, my friend the other day even called you, uh, he referred to you as the queen of off Broadway. And what, <laughs> <laughs> what, what is it about those spaces in that realm that appeals to you and keeps drawing you back? A lot working on new writing, a lot the idea that 
that there's a that there's a kind of for example day and age that it, i never would have thought that a piece like that it would exist and then we, you know we brought it to life and now there's a uh, so the idea that there's there's kinds of ways of making theater that I haven't even imagined that I'll be able to participate in um, there, but a lot of it has to do with writing. A lot of it has to do with being a part of the development process, part of the process of of building something, part of the process of of uh, getting in there with a writer and director and sort of understanding what this piece needs to be. So that I I know that that work takes place on Broadway, but I think if I was a dancer or a singer. I feel more like, well, that's the place where you do that stuff. But for um, a straight, is that what I am? A straight actor? Is that what we call ourselves? Like, <laughs> I don't even know what we call ourselves. And uh, uh, the, there isn't, a, there just aren't as many straight plays on Broadway mm -hmm. as there are off Broadway. And the, I don't know, the kinds of parts that I got to play, the, it's and I and I also have to say I've always been scared of those year-long contracts. <laughs> you know, <laughs> they're always a little scary to me, like whoa. But uh, I, yeah, I think it, I think it's you know, it's just kind of the way it went. I, I don't think I ever set out and said oh, I'm not going to be on Broadway. I, but it but it there weren't that many contexts where things were being built that I would be the right fit for that you know hmm. it, it, uh, and the and things moving like the fact that dana h moved to broadway you know i've been in things that it was like this could be on broadway this would make sense we never would have thought that about dana h <laughs> so maybe the broadway's changing and opening up and there will be more things that it would make sense you know i think i think that what we think of as a broadway play is shifting yeah well that's very exciting we're very glad uh that you're here. Congratulations on your your nomination uh, for this play. Very well deserved. Uh, so thank you for so much for sitting down with me. If you're out there, make sure you subscribe to Gold Derby. Stay with us throughout this Broadway season. And TV, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm.